Hello, Miles. Looks like you're the first of the night. And Jimbo. Greg and Jim Hook. Uh, Jim's are fast off the mark again. Alexi, Mark, Noel, Christopher, Ed. Uh, this is the 1466 we were working on last night. I'm just taking the moment to clean it up after it's been through its ultrasonic. By the way, we've, <coughs> pardon me, we have switched back to the um, AJA Kony HDMI capture card. So the Black Magic capture card has now been put back in the box. That's, um, that's a bit of an expensive temporary piece of hardware, but you know, you've got to do these things occasionally if you want to you know, maintain certain standards. It's Rex, Keith, John, PR, uh, Ikram, watching from Maldives. That's uh, quite a distance. Okay, so I better you know, tack down this wire a little bit. But you can see you know, where the ultrasonic has been. It's cleaned up most things pretty well. It's certainly a fair bit better than it was yesterday. Yeah, I'll just put some UV cure or something on that. Hey, Ken Reeve. Okay, that's just me knocking the ultraviolet liquid down to the front of the capsule so that I can actually get some out. to do better than that. really helps to spread this stuff out. Try not to let it sit around too thick. It makes it a little bit more reluctant to cure in a nice way. Hey Diatom, gee it's been a while since I've seen you here. It's probably not going to work. Well, might do the trick for that portion. And micro pairs. Uh, Jim Allen. And Christian. Yeah, we've got a lot of gyms here. It's a regular gym store. It's a fitness place. Yes, that's what. This channel is all about fitness. We specialize in gyms. I'm sure gyms are just groaning right now, going, oh man, as if we haven't heard that joke a million times. Kind of like me with the magician and you know, people pretending to talk but not really talking because they know I was wearing hearing aids. Childish stuff like that.
Hey there, Paul Hal. So we've got a few Pauls as well. Now we just need Paul S to visit one day. Not that I imagine he would. I mean, that, that chap is pretty much top of his game, so it's not like he's going to wander around here unless he's after a laugh. Oh, and the uh, upstairs tiling is done. Got grouted today. Now we just have to you know, wait it out a bit. <clears throat> just need to squeeze out a little more of that ultraviolet. This really isn't entirely necessary, but I thought I'd get it done. Trouble is, I probably should leave that out in the Australian sun for, I don't know, three or four minutes. It should be done. Or fly it up to the UK and leave it outside for 30 seconds and it'll probably be done the way they're going. Just going to stick this over on the side bench where I've got a ultraviolet light set up on a clamp where you guys can't see it. Yeah, I figure in about an hour or two they'll be cured. Okay. Oh, and the oh, I forgot to do the audio DC inboard area. I'll show you what that came up like. So it's not too bad. I'm a little worried about that cup above it, but it's not shorted, so I guess I'll just leave it as is. Best to leave well enough alone for now. I see Jim's now being referred to as Birdman, Jim Hook. Jim will be raking in the dollars in a month. Or at least I hope he will be. Uh, Miles, I'm not looking forward to the summer myself. I never do. I know a lot of people around here do complain quite a bit about the apparent severity of winter, which is a load of BS around here. But uh, yeah, summer up here is not something to look forward to in any way, shape or form. Just gonna put that aside and we'll get on with the next job. Now what have we got? I'm kind of curious, I mean the AJA, or I just called it the Aya, um, capture card does have a slightly lower CPU percentage hit it seems compared to the Black Magic. Whether it translates to anything meaningful or not, I don't know. Best I can ascertain, the um, RJF Kony card is a sort of a higher spec type card in terms of it's getting closer up to professional gear compared to, say, the Black... Not that the Black Magic is anything wrong with it, but it just seems in terms of design... The um, AJA is more of like a, an industrial, not industrial, a um, 
production sort of level stuff. Hey Tyler E, I'm trying to remember which one yours was, but I am glad to hear that it's still going. Naturally, of course, I'd be thankful for the fact that I got money from the job. Yeah, which one was yours, Tyler? Okay, I just realised I need to cover up this. Can't go exposing too much personal information. It's not like someone's going to turn up and give me $400 for that. Hey there, Rose Electronics. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty chill at the moment. Like I said, finally the tiling is done upstairs, well, I say upstairs, but it's only two stairs up. But um, the grouting was done, and so tomorrow morning we should be able to go up and walk around on it. And then probably sometime in the weekend we will start moving stuff up there. The only trouble is where our new administration office is, like where I'm going to be for doing all my paperwork and things like that. Uh, we kind of have to paint the room first. And <laughs> it's if there's one thing that I will procrastinate on, it is definitely painting. Ah. Holy smother flip and flip. This, uh, even without my glasses, this is looking like a bit of a mess. Alright. That at least looks clear, so that's a good start. Um, we have a... We have a I can't read it board. Yeah, Lexi, oh, it's a 2141, so this will be a 1700 board. I should know because it's got these annoying fan flexes. We got the tiles way back in February and we've just been waiting for the chap that we want to do them to be available and he finally was available. And initially it was just going to be two rooms but we figured it's so difficult to get a hold of him because he's in high demand for the work. Yeah, he's, he does his work well. Uh, he's not a tiler, it's, but he is sort of, um, he's an aggregator or a collaborator, whatever. He gets all the good workers in to do the work. Anyway, the person he uses for the tiling does a fantastic job. And he does do some himself, but um, it's not his primary thing. But, yeah, so it's difficult to get a hold of him, so we thought, you know what, we're just going to have to take the dive. And we said, look, you know, if you have the time available, we would like you to extend out beyond the rooms and also do the kitchen while you're at it. The, da the thing that was holding us back was that the kitchen already had tiles in there, and so they would have to be ripped up in order to obviously put down the new ones. But um, he was right to do that. He said, yep, sure thing, we'll get that sorted out. And so now uh, it was Tuesday week back that they started. And we still have, so the tiles are down, but we've still got to get the door frames rebuilt. Uh, because we had the original uh, frames in there were these prefabricated steel clip-in type things on the block walls. And yeah, they're okay, but they weren't so great. And they were not planar, as in... When they were put in, there was a little bit of a twist in them. So no matter what you did with the door, you would never get the door to sit perfectly flush against the jam. So we thought, you know what, we'll just get them ripped out, get some wood ones installed, and um, yeah, do the job in one shot. Uh, Lexi, there's actually pictures of it in the Rossman Discord on my... Uh, fan channel. I don't like to say fan channel, but that is what it's called. Thanks to Lewis. But um, yeah, I've been posting pictures of the developments. Hey there, Toby. 
two and a half years ago. U89. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. That, uh, that, well, I'm glad to hear that's still running. We don't see too many of those anymore. I don't know whether it's because people just have given up on them or whether, you know, other places are handling U89, which is, you know, it's a pretty straightforward signature style situation that we're aware of now. But two and a half years ago, crikey, that's uh, quite some time. Uh, speaking of some time, oh look, we've got a missing screw here on the screen retainer flex. It's okay, Travis, the fueling is mutual. I'm not a fan of you because of your insistence on calling out PCH failure every chance you get. Hello there, Jason. Welcome. Did you get that box yet? Or is it still in transit to you? The one with the machine that I forgot that I had. Ah, I've still got to send that 1932 to you. I'm actually waiting for someone. Um, I bought a 1932. It's all... It's okay, but it's not the best, but still waiting for it to turn up. I like to have the units around for uh, testing. I'll probably pick up another one sometime soon as well. But I've really got to go out there and get myself an M1 laptop or two. Ah, good, it got delivered today. Thank you. Glad to know. Hey there, creature. There's so many flexes on this one. It can be easy to leave them off. I'm actually kind of surprised that this went back intact. It's very hard to get these boards back in unless you use some sort of tape system or whatever to hold all those little flexes back and out of the way. Okay, Alexia, I'm not, um, I've never set up a link for it or anything, but if you can find the Rossman group, then you should be able to find my channel within that. Okay. Well, first thing we'll do is we will check the NAND resistances, just out of caution, and we'll go from there. That's fine. Open circuit on that one. That's okay. 456. I must not have been touching it in the right place. Yeah, that's okay. There's enough dust build up on here that we could have some low level corrosion on a cap or something or it could be something completely different okay they're all reading okay It's all right. That's just a temporary one. No, what are the point nines? Okay. Yeah, point nines. Okay. You don't get the point nine rail failing or having issues very often, but you know, if nothing else has, and it's worth looking at. Hey there, Warren Stamps. How's things going for you today? All right. So. Ah, shit on a stick. Uh, 
I don't like the look of that. That is... Right, I think what's happened there is someone's attempted to fill in the fillets behind the chip here in the thinking that maybe there was a problem but there are even though it may not be a full fillet like say those it is still perfectly well connected because those pads they run you know, a large portion underneath I don't think that's our problem I think that was just a red herring and fortunately, they decided, you know what, stuff this, sending it off to Paul. Now let's hope that I can actually reward that good behavior. Travis, my room certainly is there. Unless someone's decided to hide it. Oh shit, the can't fight. Loki's okay, he's here. You think it was one of just a house? Yeah, I just called out to you, but you didn't hear oh, Okay. It was Mia beating Luna. Oh, well. I had a feeling... Yeah, I kind of thought it might have been, but I didn't want to just... Yeah, no, no, of course. Yeah, I saw Mia stalk off, and then yeah. uh, Luna came out from the cupboard. Okay. So I'm just locking Mia... She's not obviously locked out, really, but she'll have to cool yeah, off to come, come around. around. Yep. <sighs> All right, looks like it was a domestic. By the way, that movie Stray, I have seen the title, and I don't think I'm going to be able to watch it. A lot of that stuff tends to just be a little bit too much for me to watch. Hey there, Eric. So, yeah, we don't have a short, we got some dust, I mean, I should say, we do not have a short in the more traditional areas for this particular board. We don't seem to have a blatantly obvious short. Could be something under here, although it's relatively low likelihood. So it could be a more complicated folder fault that actually requires some 
level of cranial competence, in which case we're all doomed. Hmm. All right, let's plug it in and see what the current behavior is. Twenty volts, thirty amp, milliamp. Yeah, that's. Oh, and it resets. Oh, it's resetting all over the place. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Or was it just resetting because of that connection? Uh, thirty milliamps. That's kind of concerning because it's not really high enough for it to be T two uh, DFU mode. Let's try another port. Also 30 million, so uh, 3215s are okay, but yeah, genuinely worried about the DFU mode there, or the T2 rather. So it's only 600 million, uh, milliwatts of power being pushed through there. Hmm. I'll try the other side. Jim Allen, I doubt very much that I would ever consider moving to the United States. Uh, well, it's definitely not the USB-C stage, because we very much have the same behavior regardless of which port we're using. Hmm. Have a look. Um, no, you can have that crappy weather for a little bit. And then you'd be happy to endure your own winters. You'd be like, ah, the sweet embrace of freezing death. Bring out the gym cam. I have a horrible feeling we're probably going to get some sort of heating up over here. Let us hope not, but uh, we might. I'm actually going to let it run, simply because of the fact that at that low wattage, the um, power, it is going to take a little while to cook up, so at least this way it gives it a chance to warm things up. Now I've got to find out what I've done with the thermal camera. Yeah, that's not a good thing to have, you know, misplaced around. Oh, there it is. Yeah, just had to curse at myself a little bit and then magically it appears. Ah, oh, no, do not do that to me. Just waiting for it to start up. Hey, Godfrey Allen. Greg M, what was your co what video did you comment on of Lewis's? Okay, camera's up. Switch to schematic. Alright, so we've got a very small amount of warmth over here, but that's to be expected because that's where we're connected. It 
But seriously, that ram chip's getting warm? That's definitely not a good sign. I don't know, it's just a reflection, thank God for that. But, I think... Alright, there's something going on around the PMIC by the looks of it. There's a false spot coming up here, I think. But that, like I said, is to be expected. But I think around the PMIC we have a legitimate bit of heating. Just trying to uh, trying to cover all the reflections is always fun. But yeah, you can see there's certainly a bit of warming up going on over here. Uh, this that inductor may be warming up. I need to make myself a dark box or something like that where I can put this in and there's no external reflections. Yeah, uh, let's peel that shield away for the T2 and see what happens. But yeah, I have a feeling that T2 is somewhat involved here. I can stick it on to the Apple Configurator and see if we can do a revive. But it, um, I have a horrible feeling it's going to start as if it is going to work. And then it's going to eventually go, could not transition DFU. Ah, damn cameras. Yep, fantastic. And I need to improve the software. I guess the problem here is that it's not sufficiently documented. So all the uh, decoding of the frames and things like that and what sort of data we're getting is all very unknown. Ah, uh, that that just broke off. Yeah, the T2 is definitely taking on some warmth. You can see it's you know starting to glow up a bit there. If I disconnect. That glow is going to go away. Yeah, it's dissipating away. So it's getting warmth. It's not to say that it's faulty, but rather it's just that it is getting warmth. So it may be just that it is in T uh, DFU mode and it's working. So any really thing I can do is plug it back in and give it a shot. I don't know. I mean, it's possible that the person's didn't try to test see if it was in DFU or not before they sent it to me. Sometimes these things happen. Yeah, creature, that's what I'm saying. I want to get a dark box. When I say a dark box, I mean a box that will take away all of those reflections. But I think I will... What the frick? Some bug trying to attack me. I just noticed there's no... What the hell? They've, they've ripped the rubbers clean off it. There should be shrouds here. And they've been ripped off. Right. Listen here, bug. You're going to go down... You're, oh, wait. You're a spider, aren't you? Aren't you? Aren't you? Tell me you're a spider. Yes, you're a spider. Ah, oh, shit. There you go. Come here, come here. There you go. 
You really shouldn't be around here, buddy. You made me think you were a mosquito for an instant there. But I'll put you somewhere safe. There you go. Come on. <sighs> Honestly, you try to take them to safety and they just running around like wild animals. Okay, that's good. All good. Spider's safe. Uh, first thing you ought to do if you want to put these 1700 boards, uh, 2141s, there are multiple ways of getting these things back together, but for me, the easiest is just three pieces of tape to hold back these cable flexors, and then you have a reasonable chance of actually succeeding. Still plenty of other flexors you've got to watch out for, though. But at least it's manageable. So, uh, it's in. If you don't have those pieces of tape, it's a complete nightmare. Oh, Arnold G. Fortunately, those little spiders, they're no drama at all. They just go about your biz their business and... You know, in any given room, there's always going to be many spiders. And that's not just in Australia, that's everywhere. Okay, maybe except perhaps Siberia or something. There are certainly some spiders you need to be aware of. Uh, Sydney funnel webs type ones. I did rage the other day, uh, there was a local um, post on the local community group and someone, um, they had a red-headed mouse spider come into their house or something and they were all proud and mighty about the fact that they squished and killed it and they're like, it reared up at me and I squished and killed it. It's like, yeah, I reared up at you because you're like, you know, a thousand times, ten thousand times bigger than it, and you can squish them with such ease. Of course, it's going to rear up at you. It knows that you're a threat, and it's trying to get out of there. But you, with your uh, temperature level IQ, just think, oh, it's going to kill me, and squished it. It's like, you don't do that. Especially the ones that they're talking about, because um, they'll just move on and find somewhere where there aren't any humans. The last thing they want to do is run into humans. There are some spiders that you do have to remove from the house if you can. Uh, redback spiders in particular tend to be a bit of an issue, mostly because they hide themselves away in little nooks and crannies. It's like underneath a chair or something like that. And then when you go pick up the chair, you in inadvertently put your hand into the nest or on the web, and that's when you get bitten. So it's not that the spider's actively trying to get you, it's just that you happen to crush its home and everything, and it's like, I kill you! Or at least tries to defend itself, and yeah. Fortunately, at least redback spiders, it's not a death sentence. You will get pretty crook, but you generally won't die. Not unless you've got some pre-existing medical condition. Then again, around here, that's a lot of people. Uh, I can't take credit for the temperature level IQ thing. I heard that somewhere else. Smooth brain is another thing. Christian, I believe, yes, they are from the same family. The redback spiders are from the Black Widow family, as far as I understand. You're obviously not going to be able to see this, but I'm going to try and DFU or anti-DFU this. D-DFU. Is that a thing? But um, I'm fairly sure that it's going to come up and say unable to transition out or something like that. Or time out waiting for transition to occur. It's unfortunate, but I see it a fair bit. And basically, if that is the case, 
Uh, let's see. Actually, come to think of it, maybe this one's going to not even go activate when I try to put it in DFU mode. If that if it doesn't activate when I try to put it in DFU mode, it'll mean the T2 is dead. If it does get into T2 mode and then it fails, then I've got to admit I'm actually going to be a little bit lost because the SSD regulators all seem okay. The resistances seem okay. Things like that, so... Yeah. All right, you stupid sports bet. Bugger off. Let's see. This is why I need multiple cameras in this workshop. So I can reveal to you all what is happening on this side. Okay. And yep, it straight away has... I didn't even have to push it into DFU mode. It has straight away come up as DFU mode. I'm just going to plug some power into it. But the trick is, will it come out of DFU mode? So we go advanced, revive device. You can usually tell, when you do a device revive, it will do a system download first, if you haven't already got a copy of what it needs locally. But the telling point is, when it does the unzipping and installation, if your fans don't kick over within a few seconds of that, uh, it's probably not going to work. The other thing is if it, uh, what is it? If it does the installation up to about 95% very quickly, within two or three seconds, then again, it's going to be dead. Um, got a 50-50 chance on this one. 50-50. Okay, let's check out our UV 1466. It's just, uh, it's 20 volts, but 33 milliamp, which is a little low, but it may be because I'm using my own USB-C meter, so maybe the reading's a little bit different. I feel like that hasn't quite cured properly in some areas. It's still downloading the system. Hey, Ben Wilson. I didn't even know you got redbacks in New Zealand. I mean, you guys miss out on a lot of the stuff that we get. All right, this thing's doing a installing the system. Oh, yeah, it's gone straight to 100% almost straight away. That's fucked. What's it say? Unexpected device state. DFU expected recovery. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, it's actually a different behavior to what I was anticipating, but I'm going to say that the TE... T2 is probably dead. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that one. Normally, when it does this rapid state, it uh, waits about 10 minutes before it comes up and say, with the transition issue. Uh, Mr. Rossman. Yes, good. I'm glad to see you feel attacked. Nothing but a clickbaiting troll, aren't you? By the way, Lewis, who's doing your thumbnails? Because I've you know, noticed a, quite a transition in the styling of the thumbnail, and it's, um, it's pretty neat. Yeah, because at least because your thumbnails are different, they pop out a lot more. Compared to, say, if you look at typical board repairs and, you know, the thumbnails are just boring as hell. And, like, I mean, if you look over your stream or repair list, over 100 um, videos, the thumbnails all look the same. There's nothing that pops out distinctly. Anyway, that's good enough for the 1466. Yes, I don't know, this uh, 2141 is probably cactus. It doesn't normally do what it did there, but the fact that it is having issues and there's nothing visibly wrong on the board, 
pretty much says to me that it's uh, no good. And what's worse is, even if you could move the NANDs to another board, it's basically not going to be worth doing it because you don't have a T2 controller that's working. Or at least it seems that way. And without that, I don't think you can decode the data. It is in DFU mode, but it's not coming out of it. Look, you try to do the revive, and it comes up with that error about... What's the error again? Unspecified device state. DFU expected recovery, possibly forced into DFU mode externally. Yeah. I could try it without the keyboard and everything connected. That might help. We'll just try it as a completely standalone board. The only thing is, often the revive will not work if you have... Um, devices not connected, like trackpad missing and things like that, then it can often fail on that account. Actually, you know what, that might be the problem. Maybe the chassis cactus. Sometimes when the chassis cactus, it will fail to come out of DFU. good reason. I really need to get myself one of these 2141s as a chassis, a known working one. I've got a 1990s, but I don't have any 2141s, and that's starting to piss me off. Especially considering how many 2141s are dead, just through NAND failure. Alright, it's back in DFU mode, so it keeps going back into DFU mode, so there's maybe some hope there after all. We'll try Revive again. It's unzipping itself again. Lewis Rossman, yes, probably something stupid. I would concur with that. Especially that it's in my workshop. That's it. I miss a response on who's doing your... Sherlock and Discord. Oh, yes, Sherlock, yes. He did your um, new logo for the live thing, didn't he? I believe. Tell me I'm right, because I don't really feel like being wrong today. Anyway, it's good to see you making... Good to see you doing those changes. It's the sort of stuff that you tell yourself, I really should do that to make things better for my channel, and you never do. By the way, did you get to a thousand subs on the on the um, Futo channel? I know I subscribed, but I haven't had a chance to check back since. Last I checked it was at like 986, I think. I do miss working on these 1466s. They are a nice sort of platform to work on. Very low stress. Uh, let's see. Cannot be restored. Unexpected again. Alright. So it definitely keeps throwing itself back into DFU mode. Kind of like as if a button was forcing it in there or something like that. So I'm going to take off the touch ID. I'm basically just going to leave it so the only thing is going to be one USB-C port and the display and power of course. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to try and find a known working 2141 chassis. There's no way I'm going to buy one new though. It may be that if I can't get any of this to work and I'll check with the forums if they say they don't have anything magical solution, it may actually require a full reformat or something. And of course all the data will be lost. But yeah, you don't want to do that too prematurely. Once you do that, that's it, it's over. Creature is going to Austin. 
so it shouldn't be too bad, I don't think. I don't know. I don't know enough about Texas, other than the stereotypes. I guess we'll get to see for sure when we have all the live streams. See what it's really like, well, from the perspective of one person. No, stuff that we don't need that. I just want to make sure this thing still boots. Come on, in you get. Good job. Just remember this has been through ultrasonic and everything else like that. Now I don't have problems with these boards post ultrasonic anymore in the same way that used to be. It used to be before there was a small percentage of a chance that even after you put it through the oven it still wouldn't boot because you know, there's a spot of liquid under the CPU or something like that. But since I've been using the compressor, I never run into that issue anymore. Just that little airbrush compressor, it's all you need. It makes things a lot better. Okay, boot stick. There we go. MagSafe. Power on. Oh, yeah, better hit the option key. Let's see. 800, 901 amp. Okay, that's charging the pack at least. We've got a sound, so that's good. Because remember, the DC board was damaged. Okay, I've got a fan spin going on here, so that's interesting. This is on the uh, 2141. It's interesting that it's giving me a fan spin. Nah. I can feel a bit of warmth in the CPU and stuff, which it probably shouldn't be doing when it's in T2 mode. DFU mode. Hmm. It may be just doing that, though, because of the fact that I've disconnected basically everything. Lewis is streaming? God damn, what a jerk. You're a jerk, Lewis. It'd be better if you were a lovable one, but you're not. You're just straight out. Black and white store brand version. Hmm. Interesting. Actually, this is interesting what I've just noticed here. It's not showing up on DFU mode now that I've disconnected the battery. So that's something to have a thought about. <sighs> yeah, this machine's working perfectly good. Temperatures are nice and high, keeping itself warm in winter. 100, 103, 104. Yep, we're definitely doing well there. All right, let's see. Face cam's not going to work. We'll check our keyboard. That's always a favorite for not working. Just do the zip across the top. You can only do this with genuine Mac keyboards. I found the third-party replacements that you get. They do not let you do that sweep. Okay, that's all looking good. Okay, that's good. Jason, yes, I remember that. I had a VIA Eden small system that we were going to use for a email content management server. Um, just as a proxy filter. So, yes. They are a bit of a pain in the backside to get working properly sometimes but when Intel bought out the Atom it kind of ate the market that VIA was probably chasing at that point now let's see sound
Jim, I wonder if we can remove that stipulation. If it legitimately is stopping people from being able to get on there. Okay. Alright, this is all good. I'm going to basically yeah, shut this down, put it all back together completely and consider it fixed. Lewis can. Ugh. Great, so basically I'm stuck with it permanently is what you're saying. That fan you can hear spinning is my DC power supply. Because it's a... It's a linear power supply. It has a multi-tap transformer in it. But it's still a linear power supply. So when you draw a lot of power, it uh, gets hot. Because it has to take whatever the closest transformer tap is and then burn off the excess voltage, so to speak. I know that's not technically the correct way of referring to it, but I'm just saying that as a shorthand. Something dropped down there and I don't know what it was. You can go full switch mode um, power supply you know, within a variable output and you know, you'll be vastly more efficient. The only trouble is with a switch mode power supply like that is then you have a you have to put more effort into the management of the uh, ripple. Whereas if it's a linear of a transformer you, you will still have your ripple you'll have your ac ripple stuff but that's vastly easier to manage when am i coding again uh not sure we did the graphing of the USB C meter i do have to add the feature of when you hover over portions of the graph or somewhere near on the graph it will then show up the um, value in that area. I don't really want to, um, how could you say, clock up the display with things like a, uh, damn it, damn it, damn it, what do you call it? A units thing. Ugh. How is it that I can't think of the word for the simplest of things? the axis, you know, the, the labeling of the axes and things like that. I don't want to clog up the display with that. Essentially at this point, full voltage is maximum if you go up the top is 22 volts and maximum current is six and a half amps. I am going to put an auto scaling. So if you are say for the whole span of the Pardon me, for the whole span of the window, if it's say under one amp, then it will scale up to provide a you know, decent view of that data. Hey horse, just saw you snuck in there. I'm going to have to dig around, check with some other people about that 2141. Something doesn't feel right. So you can't always be sure. The T2 will drive the... Um, the T2 tells, as far as I understand, tells the uh, U7000, the ISL as it were. It tells it to do the various you know, voltage boosts and stuff like that, start charging or whatever. So the fact that I'm not getting any of that, it really does lend to my idea that the T2 is trucked.
Hey there, Rilla. Steve. Because ideally when you plug it in, even if you're not getting a booting system, it would be nice if you've got charging current on the battery. But that's not even happening. It's never stuck down at 30 milliamp. Yeah, Miles, it's the um, A2141, A20, 1700. I'll have a look over it again. And I just realised that I did not put the rubber boot on the DC in card. Ah, what a pain in the backside. <sighs> Damn it. Means I've now got to disassemble this entire portion. Unfortunately, this is the curse of trying to be a decent repair person with a reputation. Is that when you make stuff ups like this, instead of going, you know what, the customer's going to be fine without that. It's not essential. Your internal voice says, you better damn well fix that now. Like, fine. I don't really want to, but fine. It's going to take an extra three minutes. Think of the zombies I don't get to kill because I wasted three minutes putting a rubber boot back on a DC board. Not like a bit of regular. I'd never do anything like that, Jason. I, yeah, it's interesting that your mind would go there. That's the stuff of complete amateurs. And of course, if that ever happened, a true professional would test things before they even powered it up. Cough, cough. Taking me more time to just get this thing back in. Creature, I don't know if I could hack it. I really don't know if I could hack it. I'm a little bit sensitive when it comes to things like that. Mostly because you know, there's a lot of such critters around here. To give you an idea, I actually find it very difficult, and I suppose this is intentional, but I find it very difficult to do things like kill rabbits and stuff in seven days just to get food. Instead, I prefer to just collect the cans of pre-made chicken portions or rabbit portions because no animals were harmed in the making of that. I realise there's a great deal of hypocrisy in that, which is why I mentioned it. <laughs> Right. Almost there, almost there. Just got to screw in a few more things. And yeah, I'll have to go digging around on that 2141. 
I said, I'm a little bit concerned. Yeah, maybe, yeah. You know, if I wasn't getting 20 volts, I would potentially suspect the ISL. But I am getting 20 volts. So that's a bit of a problem. I might start digging around, see if there are any I2C lines with unmatched values. But I think it's just a T2 job. Wow, Piper, I don't know why YouTube didn't like you doing that. See ya, Greg. I'm about to go to. I'm going to go and fulfill my role as a troll on Lewis's stream. If he's still doing it. He'll ignore my comments, though. Basically, unless it's something, some sort of glowing appraisal, he'll just ignore me. All uh, right, that's all working perfectly good. So we're all fixed, and sorry we couldn't really come up with a solution on the 2141 tonight. I'm out of here. Yeah, take care. I might see you on Lewis's stream if you're heading over there yourself. Mm, I'll give him a thumbs down just for good measure. I'll catch you all later.